Thank you, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to uh, come before you today to introduce uh, what we believe is going to be our congressman in the future. Uh, of course, we met in a special session uh, last month and uh, drew maps down at the Capitol. Uh, some people are, are happy, some people are not. Pretty much most everybody I talked to are not happy, so uh, <laughs> thank you. Obviously, did a pretty good job. We made everybody mad, so that you do that, you tell me coming out pretty good, I think. Uh, but Tom Graves is a, uh, a friend of mine. Tom and I, and Bill Heath. And, and by the way, Bill and I got the memo this morning. I don't know if the rest of you guys didn't check the emails, but uh, <laughs> Bill and I did check the emails before we got here. Uh, we were all elected in 2002, took office together in 2003. Of course, Bill only stayed in the House with us for two years before he moved over. Bob Grass was greener on the Senate side over there. But uh, Tom and I served together up until uh, last year, and uh, Mr. Graves decided to uh, move on up to bigger and better things in Washington. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to work with Tom. We started out in the legislature. We were going to a meeting called the Conservative Policy Caucus. Uh, basically, we'd get together every morning, 7 to 7.30, and read all the bills that were coming up that day to determine you know, what we thought would be uh, good legislation and what was not legislation, and question some of the authors about what they were bringing up. And that changed over a few years later, and Tom started the 216 Policy Caucus. And that was an interesting, uh, the same thing, basically was doing the same thing, and the reason we called it 216 because that was the room number of the capital we met. Uh, <laughs> it was a pretty simple 216 policy caucus. But Tom, Tom headed, headed it up for, uh, for the legislature, so we'd have a, have a good group over there in the morning. Tom's a very conservative individual. You're not going to find anybody, uh, I don't believe, that in the, those, in the uh, legislature with us or in Washington that's more conservative than Tom Graves. Uh, he's a hard worker. Uh, he is absolutely not afraid to take a stand on, on the issues that he believes in. Uh, he, will, he will fight tooth and toenail for what he believes is right. And uh, he's, he's a great individual. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to serve with him. Uh, we sort of count our, our, the years we come in by, by classmates. We call them by the classmates people we come in with. Uh, and it's a pleasure for me to be here today with two, uh, two fine classmates that I believe I came in with. And I'd like for our audience to. Uh, recognize the new congressman, his number's changing. He's been the ninth, and I know he had all kind of Freedom Fighters nine in the ninth Freedom Fighter district. You have to come up with another number for the 14th now. But uh, y'all have to rec recognize uh, Congressman Tom Graves. Well, good morning, and uh, Howard, thank you. Uh, you're right about the t our time together was fun, and. Uh, Howard will tell you and Bill will tell you that in the General Assembly is no different than being a county commissioner. It's a contact sport and you have to buckle your chin strap every now and then. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for letting me come and join you today and commissioners. I appreciate your, uh, your hospitality this morning. Uh, I, I guess my, my role is to somewhat introduce myself just a little bit, but also just let you know that the transition that we anticipate, we want it to be as smooth as possible and as easy as possible for everyone. Uh, as Howard mentioned, that the General Assembly did change the congressional districts. And I currently serve in the 9th Congressional District, which is uh, 15 counties across North Georgia, going from Alabama in the corner there across over to Hall County and White County. So it's across the top. And it adjusts a little bit and, uh, as you know, blends the current 11th and the current 9th. And, and so there's sort of like half and half, uh, so to speak. And, uh, and so I look forward to working with you as we make this transition. Uh, and, I, and I think it's going to be a good one. I know that uh, many are disappointed that Phil Gingry is moving and shifting over. A little bit and, uh, and I respect that and, and understand that and know that the shoes are big to fill and we'll do our, our job to, uh, to fill them as best as we can. I come in on the heels of uh, Nathan Deal. I replaced Nathan Deal in the ninth so uh, I had other big shoes to fill as well and, uh, and it was a very spirited election cycle. I don't know if y'all recall that. That was a time in which we had a special election and uh, there were many many candidates on the ballot uh, ended up in a runoff and I was uh, I'd won the special election but didn't get 50 percent plus one had a runoff and uh, won the runoff, was sworn in on June 14, 2010. And then uh, before I was sworn in, uh, we'd already had the debate for the next election, which was the primary for the real election, the general election, of which I had seven more opponents in that one. And, uh, and then we were 424 votes away from winning without a runoff in that, and then we ended up in another runoff. And uh, so we had four elections in 91 days in 2010. And so when we talk about the, uh, the ninth, 
what the the, uh, the Freedom Fighters in the Ninth Congressional District. I mean, they were fighting. It was a it was a it was a big fight in the Ninth, but a good one. It was a hearty debate and spirited time between Republicans, and I think that's good. I think it's it's real important that uh, iron sharpens iron. That it uh, that we're all held accountable. That we're all uh, a little bit firmer on our positions, and so it certainly made me better as a congressman. Uh, the results, though, and I think it's important for you to know this. Uh, from going through the special and being elected in June and being sworn in, we were elected ahead of the, uh, the big class on November 2nd. And a lot of people would say, well, what's the difference there? Uh, the difference is seniority. Our seniority gained 140 seniority slots overnight as a result of the big election in November, but us coming in prior to that. And everything in Washington is based off of seniority. Uh, it's uh, similar to what's done in the Senate, I think, in Georgia, but not like the House in Georgia. Uh, so uh, your position on committee assignments or, or, or whatever are all done based on seniority. And as a result, I ended up on appropriations committee. So if you think about that, I've been in, in Congress six months, and then on appropriations shows you the big seniority shift that occurred on November 2nd. Uh, so uh, it, it's going to be an honor to work with you over the next uh, several months. Uh, officially, the district doesn't change until the next election. We're elected under the new districts and uh, will be sworn in as the new congressman for the new 14th in June or January of 2013. So there's still a lot of transition time. Uh, you know, my message for, for you today is about transition, and, uh, and I, I want you to know that even over this transitional time, uh, Commissioners that uh, we're there to help you along with Phil and uh, Phil fully supports uh, my, my re-election into this new district and uh, so you sort of get a two for one I mean you can know that Phil is still has a very special place in his heart for Baldwin County as well as the other counties that are being removed from his congressional district and uh, you know and I think there are about basically three priorities I'm going to share with you that are important to me I mean number one is I know that I'm to be the voice of the congressional district and uh, and as that voice it means I'm expressing and defending the, the principles and the values of our congressional district, which are uh, uh, really um, time-tested. I mean, North Georgia values are time-tested, and the principles that we believe in uh, are, are clear, and they come from the very foundation of our country, and, uh, and they hold true, and that's a voice that you can count on me to continue to do. And then uh, number two that I think is important for you, there's a lot of interfacing I know that goes on between you and your, your uh, counterparts in various agencies. We're there to help you with that interface, and, and I know that oftentimes it doesn't go smooth, so our office is there to uh, make that uh, as smooth as possible wherever we can. And then thirdly, I believe uh, um, one of the most important roles uh, oftentimes is to intervene. Uh, you probably know better than any how the federal government wants to overreach every now and then and to try to direct what you do here on the local level. Uh, I believe my objective oftentimes is to intervene and say, wait a minute, federal government, your job is to stay in D.C. And Paulden County's job is to take care of Paulden County, as we've heard uh, so eloquently a minute ago from, from Barbara about uh, how it is families taking care of families and neighbors taking care of neighbors and communities taking care of communities. I believe that is the proper model, and we've seen it demonstrated right here this morning uh, already. And uh, the more we can keep the federal government back in the federal government's box, I think is better for all of us. So uh, you can count on me to intervene where necessary. So uh, thank you for your hospitality this morning. And, and I look forward to working with everyone as, uh, as we have a great transition over the next couple of months. And uh, anything I can do for you, we're readily, readily available whenever you need us. But uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, thank you for letting me join you this morning. Thanks, Thank you.